morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Our first reading this morning is Let Us Cucumber Drink. Oh, sorry, wrong side. <laughs> it's from John chapter 18, verse 33 to 37, and it's concerning when Jesus appeared before Pilate. Then Pilate went back into the palace and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? he asked him. King, as you use the word, or as the Jews use it, Jesus asked. Am I a Jew? Pilate retorted. Your own people and their chief priests brought you here. Why? What have you done? Then Jesus answered, I am not an earthly king. If I were, my followers would have fought when I was arrested by the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is none of the world of this world. Pilate replied, But you are a king then? Yes, Jesus said. I was born for that purpose, and I came to bring truth to the world. All who love the truth are my followers. Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. This is a letter from John to the seven churches of Turkey. Dear friends, may you have grace and peace from God who is and was and is to come, and from the sevenfold spirit before his throne, and from Jesus Christ who faithfully reveals all truth to us. He was the first to rise from death, to die no more. He is far greater than any king in all the earth. All praise to him who always loves us and who set us free from our sins by pouring out his lifeblood for us. He has gathered us into his kingdom and made us priests of God his Father. Give to him everlasting glory. He rules forever. Amen. See, he is arriving, surrounded by clouds, and every eye shall see him. Yes, and those who pierced him. And the nations will weep in sorrow and in terror when he comes. Yes, amen, let it be so. I am the A and the Z, the beginning and the ending of all things, says God, who is the Lord the all-powerful, the all-powerful one who is and was and is coming again. May the Lord have his blessing with this reading from his holy word.
and it's the church's response to these power grabbers to remind them that the ultimate authority in the world is Christ the King, not them. In our day, it's quite appropriate to remember that once again, when many of our present world leaders are also ignoring this reality, it's important to remember Christ the King Sunday. I'm sure certain names come to mind, but for the sake of civility just now, we believe that some of those world powers are unnamed. We can mention names in coffee time. But I think it, it might be safe to say, though, that many world leaders would not appreciate being reminded that there's a greater power than them. And since Jesus the King was born, one day, they and the rest of the world will answer to him. I expect that even here, even though we know Jesus loves us, we may have our trepidations that one day we will answer to him. We will see him face to face. We've uh, likely seen those comedic scenes with dogs in the house being questioned as to who stole the cat food or made a mess in the living room. Those are faces. They know their owners look, love them, but the look of guilt on their faces, those dogs' faces, is quite hilarious. We all have our dog days, don't we? And we just know, uh, not a good day for me. I, I crossed the line. Or uh, if we're in a room with someone who we esteem highly, we may feel inferior to that person. What will it be like when we're standing in front of the King of Kings in his perfection? Throughout the scriptures, God reminds his chosen people, the Jews, again and again, and the rest of the world at that time, that he is God, the creator of the world, and that he's all-powerful. He reminds them again and again that one day he would send someone who would rule in righteousness and peace. And in the Advent Christmas season starting next Sunday, we will see many of those passages about the righteous leader God is going to send. And those promises of what God was going to do, that he hadn't forgotten them, kept the Jews hopeful through many, many hard times. In today's passage from John's Gospel that Richard read from, we see that God kept his promise. Jesus, God's Son, did come. And now in that familiar passage, we see him standing before Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. Pilate is very anxious because he knows that Jesus is innocent of the accusations by the Jews against him. And William Barclay, a Bible commentator from some time ago, puts it beautifully saying, first and foremost, no one can read this story without seeing the sheer majesty of Jesus. There is no sense that Jesus is on trial. When a man faces Jesus, it is not Jesus who is on trial, it is the man. Pilate may have treated many Jewish things with arrogant content, but if he did not so treat Jesus. As we read the story, we cannot help feeling that it is Jesus who is in control, and Pilate who is bewildered and floundering in a situation which he cannot understand. The majesty of Jesus never shone more radiantly than in the hour when he was on trial before men. Here Jesus, with utter directness, speaks to us of his kingdom. His kingdom, he lays it down, is not of this earth. His kingdom is not based on force and arms, but it is a kingdom in the hearts of men. He would never deny that he aimed at conquest, but it was a conquest of love. So writes William Barclay. And isn't that what we want today too? People who will lead and carry for the common person and in truth and goodness? How many leaders have been caught in scandals and in self-aggrandizement? There are numerous examples. For example, We've likely heard of leaders during the COVID lockdowns telling people to stay away from others, stay at home, don't go out, but being found out having parties with friends. 
we would not find Jesus doing that. He stands on the side of truth and caring and love. I read a young man named Andreas who decided that following the Lord was what he wanted to do. He was asked why. He said, well, I, I been told if I decide to follow Jesus, he will meet my needs and my life will get very good. The man who spoke and said, no, Andreas, no. Andreas blinked his surprise and the man continued, actually, you may accept Jesus and find that life goes very badly for you. What do you mean, the young man asked. Well, the man answered, you may find that your friends reject you. You could lose your job. Your family might oppose your decision. There are a lot of bad things that might happen to you if you decide to follow Jesus. When Jesus called you, he called you to go the way of the cross. The young man stared at him and asked the obvious question, then why would I want to follow Jesus? And the other man answered, because Jesus is true. Living is part of God's kingdom, not of this world. Definitely has its challenges. Jesus found that out. That's why he was on trial before Pilate, even though he had done nothing wrong, it's like ticking off those in power. And how many do we hear of today who are mocked or thrown into prison because in truth they are doing what is right, but according to the world's standards are not accepted? And yet Jesus gives this surprising assurance. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In the biblical book of Proverbs, we find these words of encouragement. Trust the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. The Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. And then you understand what is right and just and fair. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. So writes King Solomon, Proverbs. When we seek to follow in God's ways, we may be challenged. For we are seeking to walk in his kingdom, not in this world. But one day, as the last book of the Bible states, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. So be it. John, the writer of that book of Revelation, continues, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples of the world will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha and Omega are the Greek words for beginning and the end, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. When it says there that all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him, I believe that means that all those who have rejected him in their lifetime, and now they know it's too late. As we end this liturgical year, if we are trusting the one whose birth we will soon be starting to celebrate uh, with the beginning of Advent, let us rejoice that he has invited us to be part of his kingdom, a kingdom not of this world, but one of truth and love and caring and never-ending life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. If you take your voices united hymn book, please, the red book, and turn to Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending, number 25.